So this next part, um, I'm really excited about because this is where uh, timber, as opposed to just okay, this is a nice way to fetch stuff from your WordPress database. This is where it actually gets the nuts and bolts of replacing some of the most frustrating parts of theming in WordPress. So what I'm going to do is take all of these um, post intros that we have on the home page and move them into a twig file. Um, and that is going to include deleting my least favorite part of WordPress, which is right here, the loop. So to do that, um, rather than start by deleting this, I'm going to make sure I have the HTML I need to recreate this on the back end. So I'm going to inspect here. and copy as HTML to make sure I have all that. So I'm going to create a new file, paste that, and let's save it again into my views folders, and I'm going to save it as tz-post, tz is my abbreviation, dot twig. So boom, it all comes alive, um, and what I'm really excited about is we are now in a position to delete this guy. Of course, when I refresh, that means that all of the actual content is gone. But we're very close to getting it back. What I'm going to do is add another line down here for posts is equal to timber get posts. And then timber render and I'm going to create another file. I'm going to call it just home feed, or how about home main dot twig. Really, it makes more sense to context posts is equal to get posts. And we're going to send that same context object. So um, before I refresh, I'm going to need to actually do this. So create another new file and call it home-main.twig, save and refresh. Okay, so it's good that we're not getting any errors, but we actually now need to connect these two. So what we've done is send our context objects now with posts in them to home main and check this out. So if I do posts print r, I'll see that I get a big old mess representing all of the posts that are coming across. You can see we've got zero here. I know this is an array of posts. So to do arrays in Twig, it's actually a really nice piece of syntax. So I'm going to do percent, and a single brace percent is how you kind of call Twig functions. You'll see in a second the difference between a normal Twig variable. So if I do for post in posts and for, what we're doing is we're taking out each item in that array and representing it as post. So it's from the posts array. And this is very similar to like a for each loop in PHP. And if I now include and tease post dot twig, close that. What we're doing is we're plucking that same, um, this include, of course, right now it doesn't have anything dynamic in it. And it's looping through and giving me, you know, uh, what is this, like eight or so different uh, instances of it. So we're very close to now being able to dynamicize this. So some of the stuff I can see right away is where we've got the ID here. I want to replace all these with post.id. And if I refresh, not going to notice anything different. Let's do one that is actually going to be seen, and that is the entry title here, which right now is chicken wings from one of those. But if we change that to post dot post underscore title, change this paragraph copy to post dot get content, we should now see that things are starting to look like what we had before. So we've got chicken wings, a little stuff about chicken wings I pulled from Wikipedia, pizza, steak, and then all these stuff from the generic test posts. So I want to keep going. Um, there are a few other places where we still have the chicken wing stuff. So for example, here we have an entry title which is linked to itself. And let's replace this with post.get underscore path. 
permalink to not chicken wings, but post dot post title. And then finally down here, post dot get path. And you're not commenting on chicken wings, you're commenting on the post dot post underscore title. So we've got stuff uh, pretty well worked out. Clean up this HTML a little bit more, but you know, I refresh, I'm able, if I go to, let's say, edit this test post screen, I actually get to test post. So things are working. And I just want to compare for you real quick. This is the tease post, and this is what um, the stitch theme was using before. It's content dash post dot PHP over here. I just want to show you these side by side and just how much uh, neater the twig view is. Um, of course, it's not impossible to work in this PHP view, but man, there's just, uh, it's a lot harder to read and a, a much more difficult time I find with understanding, you know, like these arguments for the title, um, you know, somehow represents the HTML around it. Stuff like that I, I find just gets incredibly confusing um, compared to having a really solid understanding of the HTML structure that something is going to be, and then substituting in the variables. In here, we had two calls that were very similar. Get post uh, with an argument of 56, got just that single post object uh, for the welcome message, whereas get posts, plural, um, I'm not sending any arguments. Um, the reason is because by default, get post is go just going to get whatever content is in the current query or loop. So that's why we have um, in these most recent posts. One of the cool things is that you can send your own stuff into this. So using standard WordPress uh, query strings or query arrays, like if I wanted to order this by ascending, so instead of reverse chronological, chronological, if I refresh, I get hello world at the top because that is the oldest post. So you can um, manipulate queries in that way. Another thing over here that uh, eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed is that we've got the edit link fixed into the HTML. So for example, if I open up a anonymous browsing window and go to localhost, so now I'm an anonymous user, they still have those edit links. Now granted, when they click on them, they just get to this, but we don't want to show those edit links, obviously, to our readers. So if I go here, let's just break this out into its own line. Yeah, this is the edit link for this post. I can do a if statement with twig. So again, you know, you'll notice that double braces indicate variables. Single brace with a percent is the uh, syntax for a twig function. So if I do if post.can underscore edit, and then end if, I'm saying if the current user has permission to edit a post, show this content. So if I refresh, okay, I still get the edit links with chicken wings over here, but again, in my anonymous window, if I go to localhost, those edit links are gone. And there are more functions that are gonna help you with stuff like that. For example, you know, you don't wanna put, paste this in every time. I can do post.getEdit underscore URL. Um, some other places we have a post type here. So post.post .post underscore type. We don't want recipes, we want post.post .post underscore type. So it's super simple you know, to, to substitute in these um, variables. So another one I have is post, post underscore, or get post underscore type. If I do a print a r on that, this is what it gives me. So if I want that capital recipes, you can see we've got label. So get post type dot label. And now you can see inside of this title anchor link, it says edit recipes um, or edit posts in different places. Um, so that is the basics of how we convert a 
a piece of HTML into a Twig template.